Today, we will install Private GPT to chat with our documents. This is a screenshot of an example from the Private GPT GitHub page. Here are the installation instructions. I will leave a link to this page. Begin by cloning the repository with git clone. I will also leave a link to the prerequisite video in case you don't have Anaconda or git installed. I will be using the prerequisite video myself within this video later. Once cloned, we can cd into the new folder. I am too lazy to type, so I will copy-paste that command. Next, it mentions we need Python 3.11 installed. As that eye drop commercial doctor says, have dry eyes or need a specific version of Python. Well, there is a conda environment for that. Are you trying to be funny? Anyways, I will create a new conda environment called private GPT and initialize it with Python version 3.11. To activate the environment, I will copy paste this. Next, we must install poetry. I have never installed this before, so let's see how this goes. Here is the PowerShell command we can use to install it. It mentions if we have Python installed through the Microsoft Store, replace Pi with Python. Well, I am going to go ahead and just do that because Conda uses the Python command and not the Pi command when I tested earlier. Now, I wasn't sure if I should install this globally or just for the Conda environment. So I ended up using the Anaconda PowerShell prompt for this. Let's see how this goes. I am going to try to activate the private GPT environment in this. Spoiler alert, in the end, it ended up getting installed globally anyways, so I am not sure why I did it this way, but oh well. It has finished. It says you can test that everything is set up by executing poetry dash dash version copy paste. And we get an error saying poetry is not recognized. Here it mentions we need to add the poetry scripts path to our path environment variables. I am going to copy paste this app data and see where the scripts folder is for poetry. Scroll down and go into the Pi poetry folder. Then this Venn folder. And here is the scripts folder. I will copy the path to this folder. And then let's go into the environment variables. Select path and click edit. I will create a new entry here and paste the path to that scripts folder. Click OK on all the open windows. Let's test it now. I will open an anaconda prompt and type poetry dash dash version and hit enter to see if it shows an error. No error message, great. Let's activate the conda environment and move on to the next step. After installing poetry, it mentions to have a valid C++ compiler like GCC and there is a link with more information. The link just linked back to this same page, so we must scroll down until we get to that section of the page with more information for this. And here is the section we are looking for. It mentions to install Visual Studio 2022 and select the two mentioned components, which I already have. There will be a link to the prerequisite video where I installed that. Next, we must install MinGW. I had installed this previously, but I don't think I have reinstalled this after re-imaging my machine a while back. I am just going to re-watch that part of the prerequisite video real quick. Windows, we will need to download the MinGW installer from this link. Once downloaded, I think I included links to where each thing can be downloaded in the description of this video. Downloaded, let's carry on. Launch the installer. and click install. I'm going to leave the default settings and click continue. Once that finishes, click continue to launch the MinGW application. Here it says to select MinGW32 base. And this one for the GCC++. Now we must go to the installation tab and click apply changes. On this page, it mentions to select the GCC component, which I think I did when selecting those two items from the video. So let's go ahead and install those two selected components. While that installs, I am going to tell a joke. Knock, knock. Who's there? This is. This is who? This is all wrong. I shouldn't be up here. 
I should be in school, on the other side of the ocean. Anyways, with that installed, let's go back to the install steps. We need to install make for scripts. For Windows, we can use chocolatey. That sounds delicious. I will call it chocolate. It turns out I already have chocolate installed as part of some other install I was testing with. But for this video, I will delete and reinstall it for demonstration purposes. First, we need to launch PowerShell as administrator. Then, we run this command to get the execution policy to make sure it is not restricted. It looks like it is restricted. So then we will need to run this set execution policy to all signed. And select yes at this prompt. Now let's call the get execution policy again to make sure it is no longer restricted. Great, now we need to run this command to install some delicious chocolate onto our machine. It says chocolate is already installed and that I can delete the folder and try again. Here is the chocolate folder. I am just going to delete it. Now let's rerun that command. And now it is installing some deliciousness. It is done. Now we can set the policy back to what it was. If we do a get policy, we see that it is set to bypass right now. I am going to set it back to restricted by calling this command. Oops, I have a typo. Let me fix that. And enter yes at the prompt. Now this message is fine because I need to relaunch the PowerShell to have the changes take effect. Just to confirm, I will close and relaunch PowerShell and then rerun the get policy command. It is back to restricted. Great. With the chocolate installed, we can now run this command. Let's copy it and then open the conda prompt as administrator and activate the private GPT environment. Oops, I forgot to activate the environment before running the command. Well, I guess it must be now installed globally. Hashtag YOLO. I am going to open a new normal anaconda prompt and this time activate the private GPT environment and CD into the folder where private GPT is installed and then proceed with the next step of the install. After eating the chocolate, we must next poetry install with UI. I will copy paste and run this. Once this finishes installing, we can move on to the next step. Next, it mentions we can verify everything is working by running make run. So I am going to copy paste and run this command to verify everything is working. Well, it looks like everything is not working. I received this error saying could not import Llama CPP and to install it with pip install Llama CPP Python. It also referenced the CPP Python GitHub page and this page has the same install command so I will copy paste and run this command. That has finished. Let's rerun that make run command to verify everything is working correctly now. Looks like everything is not working correctly. I received this error saying provided model path does not exist. I did a search of that message on the GitHub issues for this repository and found someone else with the exact same error. Someone asked if they ran this poetry run Python script setup command. I don't remember running this command. I did a search for this in the install instructions and it turns out it is there but after the step we are currently on and also a variation of it is in parentheses on the step we are on as a potential another option for the make run command. So anyways, I will go ahead and run this command. It looks like this command is downloading that model that the make run command was erroring on when it said it could not find the model. It has finished. Now let's rerun that make run command once again to make sure everything is working correctly. Looks like that work. It says it is running the unicorn server now. I am going to smash that like button. I am going to go to that URL. Because I am lazy, I am just going to use the link on the install instructions page. And there we have it. Let's test this. I am going to select LLM chat and I will just say hi. This is currently going to be using just the CPU, so it will take a while to respond. After this short test, we will make it so that it uses CUDA so that it runs faster. It has finished responding. Next, I am going to copy the text of this article from the NBA website and save it as a text file and then upload it to the local private GPT and ask it questions about it using the local LLM. I will save the text file on the desktop. Then let's go to the private GPT web UI and click upload files. 
I will select that file I just created. This article says the Spurs are on an eight-game losing streak. It mentions dropping eight straight games. So I am going to ask it what is the current Spurs winning or losing a streak. This will take some time since it is only using the CPU. I considered skipping to where the answer is starting to generate, or fast-forwarding through this, or keeping it in real time, and telling more knock-knock jokes. Well, knock-knock. Why did the duck cross the road? Well, I guess we can just look at the CPU usage graph for entertainment then. Fine, skipping ahead to when the text starts generating. And the text is now generating. That is correct. The article said they dropped eight games. It mentions that James Harden scored 24 points in the Clippers' last game, but doesn't say that in those words. Let's see if Private GPT is able to figure it out. I am going to ask it how many points did James Harden score in the Clippers' last game? Skipping ahead. That is the correct answer. Next, let's enable CUDA. It mentions I will need the CUDA toolkit installed and CMake installed. I have all of those installed already. I will copy paste this command into Anaconda Power Shell and run it. First, I will activate the Conda environment. And I also need to remember to CD to the repository install directory. And now I can run that command, which I tried running earlier, but had gotten an error because I didn't CD to the directory. Here it mentions if everything is correct, the BLAS should be 1. I am going to reopen the Anaconda prompt because previously I still had the application running when I enabled CUDA. So I'm going to relaunch it from this new Anaconda prompt and we will see if that BLAS is 1. And we see now that the BLAS is 1. Great! Let's launch the browser to the web UI. For that same text file, I will ask it about how many points James Harden scored. It started responding immediately because now it is using CUDA and GPU. And the answer is correct. Great! To the UI, there doesn't seem to be any way to remove the files you are chatting with. You can only add more files to the list of files you wish to chat with. If you want to remove the files, you can remove them all with a command before launching the application. This command make white will do just that. I'm going to do control C to terminate the batch job and then run make wipe. And now we can relaunch it with make run. If we now browse to the web UI, we will see that the document is no longer there. And if we wanted to change the LLM we are using, we can modify this settings.yaml file. Here we can specify the hugging face model card name for the DGUF model. Well, that is pretty much it, and all I can think of at the moment. This was not a simple install like some other applications and required a lot of dependencies and methods of installation like poetry and chocolate that I had not used before, so it was an adventure. Anyways, thanks for watching and knock knock.